All right, well, welcome everybody. I'm just going to do a quick introduction and then Eduardo do his thing. He's the star of the show. My name is Georgiana Melendez. I'm the co director for Commonwealth Compact. Our mission is to make Massachusetts a welcoming place for people of color. And I'm not tired yet, but um, it is a hefty mission. And we try to achieve that through helping employers look at how they're doing, establish some kind of a baseline for where they are as a, an employer. And once they look at that baseline, decide whether or not they want to do something about it. And usually they do. So our goal is to connect them to resources and people who can help them achieve whatever goal they set. We do not set goals for companies. Um, we do not prescribe um, things that you should be doing, but we do expose you to best practices. So we help you see what other people are doing that works in their companies. And the other thing we do, and we just launched and very proud of, um, is we connect you to talent. Um, the biggest barrier for folks in, in the university goals is access to talent, finding them, finding people with the right skill sets, um, and also for the talent to find the right companies, companies who get diversity and who don't want to just fill numbers, but to really um, access their ideas, access their creativity, and put them in key leadership positions. So it's wonderful to window dress the front line, but when you look at your company, the pyramid usually looks like this, and at the top is usually a white male, and it kind of... So that's not a surprise, I'm not telling you something you don't know, and most companies want to change that. So we're about helping you do that. And part of what we do, and all of that, is bring in speakers, um, have <laughs> workshops that are relevant to diversity goals that you might have within your company. So um, if you work in a region that has a large Hispanic population, the person you want to hear talking about that is my good friend, Eduardo Vesco, who is an excellent networker. Um, and I'm not going to really tell you what he's going to talk about because he's going to do a great job. But I will tell you that any time I've tried to call him or needed a connection or needed to be introduced to someone, he's done it. Um, and without hesitation and it doesn't take a long time. So those kinds of people are, are the kind of people you want to know um, and the kind of people you want to hire in your business. So um, I'm just going to turn it over to him. But before I do, a couple of logistics. I am recording the session. And if you have any issues with that, please let me know. Um, I will try not to show your face. But the idea is that folks who aren't able to make it because this is a statewide initiative, like in Western Mass, who want to hear this, should have the benefit of doing that. So we post it um, on our website after the session is over. Um, and so the bathrooms are out over there. So the way you came in, if you go back that way, take a right at your first right. Men and ladies room is right there. Um, and if you have any questions, we'll be around afterwards. All right, so Senor Crespo. Thank you, Gracias. 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 I hope that the recording is about the immigration, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done my papers yet. Right? Oh, boy. <laughs> Anybody from the IRS here? <laughs> oh, you are? No. <laughs> I was going to walk away. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for coming. Uh, Georgiana, a nice introduction. I really appreciate it. And uh, great to see my great friend, Patricia Nielsen, uh, right here from UMass, and, and so many of our friends. And hey, Pat. Not relatives, but I mean family-wise, you know, you're all family like that. So let me tell you this: when when Georgiana, you know, asked me to to share a presentation about the Hispanic market, this is something that I know a little bit about, and I was thinking of what should I put in an album? Because this topic, I mean, there are books, volumes of data, and and uh, a whole lot of uh, resources out there any market, whether it be Hispanic or Asian American, African American, uh, gays and lesbians, women, etc. There are just tons of volume. And in an hour, what I would try to do is give you some soft information, some opinions, of course, and we're all going to have our own opinions. And feel free to raise your hand and uh, interact. So this is not just a kind of presentation. Hopefully we have a dialogue. There will be some, some questions here that we'd like to share and, and to ask. And I know that we, we cannot get too long-winded because of the time frame, but I hope that you will enjoy the presentation. Now, the same, in the same manner, in the same way that previous migrations have come here, actually you do remember that the American Indians uh, were actually the only native people that were already here. And you will also remember historically that a great deal of, of the Southwest uh, was at one time Spanish territory. And you may also remember that uh, 
part of the uh, southeast, the Louisiana area, and so forth. And through history, there have been the treaties, and there have been historical changes in who owns what, and so forth. But now we have the United States of America. But territory-wise, there is a line that is called a border, and south of the border and north of the border. And the border is always there, but the people were already there. So what I'm saying to you is, bear in mind that some folks think that Latinos just got here. And for your information, Latinos were here prior to the Philippines. There is, you know, there is an organization called HispanicAchievements.org. HispanicAchievements.org. If you want to learn a little bit more about the history of Latinos, in terms of the relationship of what Latinos and or Hispanic surname people have done for the well-being of the United States of America, please refer to, to that source, because it's a very relevant source. I'm sharing that with you because the preamble to this presentation is that, unfortunately, society sometimes tends to be manipulated by the media sources, and the media from my point of view, does not really portray in a good light what Hispanics and or any other immigrants that are coming to this country who we really are. And so why do Latinos actually come here? Now, I'm going to use interchangeably the term Hispanics and Latinos. And if you want to get into a whole discussion as to why do you use one or the other, I can send you a three-page article. <laughs> okay. Because I don't have time to. <laughs> but basically, you know, it's a change. You know, it's good. In the American dream, and now bear in mind the people of Latin America and the Caribbean, the major, the biggest, the most dramatic influence that we have had as people has been from the U.S. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that Spaniards, you know, people from Spain that conquer us and, and so forth, that we didn't inherit uh, the customs and traditions and language and so forth, but we're not talking about marketing and money, we're not talking about commerce. Who has Latin America been trading with? for a long, long time, it's the US. And so as, as the number one partner, we have also been influenced by what we see in television. And right now with the cable networks and so forth, you know, it's, it's kind of a global situation. And whatever has happened in the US, some members of society in other areas have tried to imitate the US. Isn't that correct? I mean, you know, I mean, look, look, look at some of the major stars, the, uh, the personalities, the characters in, in, uh, in TV, whether they are real or not real, in Latin America, it's a big hit. In other words, we are very much influenced by what happens here in this country. Now, as the number of immigrants have been settling here in the U.S., and when they go back, maybe they didn't have money, they, you know, they didn't have a car where they came from, maybe they didn't have a lot of material things, so when they go back, what they do is they flood them. Some people do flaunt it, and they have a credit card, and they, they, can, they can pay for a lot of things that they couldn't pay with before they left. So is it contagious or not? I think it is. Human nature says that if I tell you that I become a millionaire doing whatever it is, do you think you're going to pay attention? I would think so. So we have, so it is, it is not our fault that we have been uh, magnified, you know, we have been magnetized, attracted to the U.S. to achieve the American dream because you have sold it to us. The U.S. has sold that American dream to Latin Americans. So do not blame us for wanting to come here, is what I'm saying, because he's supposed to be the land of opportunity. So to support the family and educate the children and go, and, and go back. The go back issue is a very latent issue. A lot of people that have come, let's say, in the last 10, 10, 5, 10 years or so, do you know anybody that has wanted to go back? Do you know anybody that went back? Okay? And that is changing as, as communities, as families are getting more settled. It does happen. Now, I'm asking you a question. Do you think that if Italians and the Irish and the French and the Polish, when they came here, if they could have gone back after they made their money right away, would they have gone back? Some have. Some could have, right? Some. I mean, the Irish, they didn't have the money, now they do. Do they want to go back? I would imagine so. Was it easy to go back? No. So, I'm just putting that historical context that when people say to me, gee, Eduardo, you know, I wonder why these people you know, don't settle here, they don't plant their roots in here. Well, the reality is that a lot of people came just for the money. I've got to be honest. If, if a lot of families in Latin America would have the means and would have uh, 
a standard of living that would be okay for them, they would not want to come here. Okay? And when they come here and they do make their money, some of them do want to go back and some may say, you know, we go back and then we come back because they made because we have a plan and achieve and so forth. Now, the whole culture shock, let me tell you why I'm including this slide in here. It is because a lot of, you know, some people, I'm not saying a lot, but some people, you know, just, <coughs> when, they, when they're thinking about the whole Latino and other ethnic groups, they are not thinking from the heart. They are not thinking from the soul. They are thinking from the pocket and from the money, you see? And it is okay, of course it is okay to make money, and, you know, we live in a capitalist system. So, I am one of, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, that what I'm being. But at the same time, you know, when I hear people saying or criticizing Latinos, because you know it's it's like we don't adapt, we are not part of society, it's like them and us. It's like why are Latinos so you know big, so group, you know, why why do they have certain uh, behaviors? And and why don't they just kind of melt in? You know, why don't they do like what the Italians did and, 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 and the French did and, and the Irish did and so forth? Well, because once again, the historical context is one that back when those migrations uh, came in, there was no internet, there was no phone, there were no planes. And uh, besides, geographic proximity. We didn't have to cross an ocean to the people. So keep that kind of in mind as to what happens with a culture shock. I mean, some of you were saying that you had a culture shock when you arrived to the, to the campus here, <laughs> <laughs> trying to find a location. Isn't that a cultural shock? <laughs> cultural shock means being lost in an environment that you don't know. <laughs> you, we lost all of our familiar signs. <laughs> you know? and then I wanted to go online, and then you know, I asked somebody, actually somebody from one of these uh, offices, and I said, could you help me connect? I said, oh, gee, that's complicated, I don't know. Well, thank God that Brandon uh, helped me out with a uh, passport and so forth. <laughs> But the culture shock issue is one that it's not only to immigrants, it's, it's not only to men, not only to women or children, it is an area that affects our lives every single day. It really does. I mean, when I travel, even, even when I get out of the tea sometimes, I mean, it is a culture shock as to what you see or what you hear. <laughs> now, the cultural context of Latinos, this is, this is kind of an important issue. No, some some people, you know, would say, gee, Eduardo, you know, I think, you know, one time I worked, I worked for a major employer a long time ago, 100 years ago, and uh, and I was told by one of my immediate supervisors that I had a, I had a hang up, that I had a chip on my shoulders, that I had a problem, you know, that. and I said, gee, you can explain to me what my problem is. I know I got a lot of problems, but I didn't, I didn't, know, I didn't know what problem he was referring to. And he said, well, you know, when you are walking, because I used to be a, a supervisor in a manufacturing department, and I happened to have hired 900 people. This is 10,000 10, people in this factory, gigantic factory in North and over. And, and he said to me, he said, Eduardo, people have noticed that when you're walking, you know, you're walking gigantic place, and people call you, Eduardo, hey, como estas? And, you know, how are you? And I said, well, What's wrong with it? He said, well, you know, some people resent that because how many people are called when they walk on the aisle? Not too many people. Well, I have to be one of the lucky ones, I guess. And I said, well, you know what? It was actually your fault because the company, when they hired me, they put a whole spread in their magazine that kind of people know who I was. And besides, when you hire people, usually they kind of appreciate it. The assimilation means I'm not, I'm not Jorge Eduardo Crespo Farah. I'm George Edward. You know what Crespo means? <laughs> In Spanish? Crespo, what does it mean? Curly. Curly, 